Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert ringside at the Palace. Tonight, a main event that has expectations of an impending train wreck and an overwhelming sense of the unknown. Fight fans, welcome back. Today, we introduce our Unforgettable Night series, features where we look at some of the most bizarre, oh, some of the most spectacular, the and some of the most notorious nights that the sport has ever seen. Oh, he's crying in his corner. I've never seen anything like this. Where better to start than a night labeled The Showdown in Motown, a collision between two dangerous, unstable, yet incredibly talented heavyweights. Though, a night that doesn't bring back particularly great memories for either. Unbelievable sight here at the Palace of Auburn Hill. Somebody's gonna get hurt in there. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell to see all of our uploads as we take a look at the night Iron Mike made his opponent quit. Now it's getting very ugly here now. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. There's been a lot of coins thrown into the ring. He wants to leave before uh, the situation becomes any worse. What happened here? He got bit, I Not think. Not. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Well, first he had a parachute drop on him, now he had a heavyweight behind him. And I'm beginning more and more to believe Tyson is a confused individual. Three years had passed since the infamous Holyfield bouts at the MGM. The largest find in the history of sports. Can he regroup after those two devastating losses? Though, after serving a 15-month ban for his actions, Tyson hit the ground running. Making his long-awaited return to the ring. Oh, 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 in his resurgence, he made light work of his first few opponents. Put that heat on him. He wasn't ready for that heat. Before heading onto British soil to beat both Francis and Savaris in ferocious style. He looks badly shaken up from it. Within the first, what was that? 10 or 15 seconds. Victories that set the perfect platform to directly call out the champion in what would become one of boxing's most notorious post-fight interviews. I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. In one word, guys, would he beat Lennox Lewis? No. No. I don't think he'd beat Lennox Lewis, but uh, um, I, I, no, 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 no. Look, baby, the circus here. Elephant in the room, what's your purpose here? The Lewis fight undoubtedly made for the biggest in boxing at the time, but preparing for another short, stocky, and dangerous opponent in David Tua, the Brit already had his hands full. Everybody that's tried has always come up short, always failed. I don't see him being successful in that. I'm not intimidated by that. I'm not intimidated by it. Instead, it was the likes of Sanders, Izon, and Galata that made the shortlist as Tyson's next opponent. And whilst none really presented a serious threat on paper, it was the latter, the tall, rangy Polish fighter that stood out for a variety of reasons. Bite him in the shoulder, he's done that. Whack him in his privates, he's done that kind of a thing. Drop kick him into the seething crowd, he hasn't done that yet. With a 36-4 professional record, Andrew Galata was much more of a problem than many believed. You out of control. Hard shot by Galata. Bowie's wasted again. He was an Olympic bronze medalist with over a hundred amateur wins, and now training out of Chicago, he built up an impressive knockout ratio of his own. He could be in trouble right here. He's not a dying. His size and physical presence made him tailor-made in Tyson's preparation for Lennox Lewis. Though it was the same stature and rough and tumble style that had previously given Mike problems. Three consecutive left hooks thrown by Tony Tucker. You don't see that from a big man. Galata's talent went widely under the radar as he was instead tarred with the brush of being a dirty fighter. Though effectively robbing himself of his two biggest wins against another of the Golden Era's finest, it's clear to see why. And I said, Andrew, if you hit him low one more time, it's over. Do you understand that? And he said, yes, I do. Walked out there, hit him low. That was another low blow. Down goes Bo, that's, 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 that's it. The poll was all wrong for Bo, who was exciting and good on the inside, but not so effective at range. 
And so, the success with his hand speed and combinations before he threw it away was something he hoped to replicate against Tyson. Yes, Bobby, how good could Andrew Galata be? You know, Steve, if he plays by the rules, he could have, maybe even should have had a world championship already. We saw him with Riddick Boat not once but twice, dominating him not once but twice, and getting disqualified not once but twice. Tyson's quest to once again be king of the heavyweights has taken him to the palace here at Auburn Hills. In need of a credible opponent, Tyson asked for Andrew Galata, and Friday night he'll get his wish. I want to play. Yeah, bring Andrew Galata on. Bring those guys. They can keep their, their title. I don't want their title. I want, I want to strip them of their health. The public were under no illusions. Mike was far removed from his devastating best and had a lot going on in his personal life. The Don King got me involved with, but I'm just trying to get out this debt. Did you ever steal from Mike Tyson? Never. Never steal from anyone. It's painful because I love the guy. Ali made him, I subtained him, and now I'm gonna break him. But with his speed and power, he remained a huge, huge threat. He's gonna knock the out! I'm knocking Cole out! And his name, still drew an audience like no other in the sport. All the time in prison, I always ran these guys, they were tough. When they were then they ain't tough. When they get confronted, they ain't tough. When I bring that pain to them, they ain't tough. Two fighters took care of formalities at the weigh-in. Tyson was 222, Galata 240. And while he admitted to me that he's always afraid before his fights, Galata vows not to be intimidated by Tyson. However, after the ear bite incident and Tyson's bout against Norris being declared a no contest, after a late blow, it was the controversy factor and the what ifs that made this one exciting. I wish your mother hit me low. I wish he did that. I didn't come to this town to lose. Yeah, I'm grown, grown enough, you know, to step in the ring and win this guy. Physically, I never felt better. The media looked set to have a field day, posing questions about how this could ever be a fair fight and whether the bout would need. Two referees. So somebody said maybe I'm dirty, but it's not the truth. You know, it's the truth is, and I'm, I'm I'm taking the shower like three times a day. You know, so <laughs> believe me that. He's over there laughing. We're up there laughing. Everybody laughing. This is serious stuff. We won't be laughing Friday. Though with Mike's intimidation against Galata's mystique of being a real life Ivan Drago, chaos was on the horizon. Well, you try to intimidate him and how? And by smashing a bunch of right hand and left hooks on his jaw and ribs. You're going right after him? I, I, that's the only way I ever go after anyone. We'll take you into the dressing room of the former undisputed heavyweight champ. And as for tonight, Tyson says it'll last as long as it takes, in his words, to kill somebody. In some of his post-fight interviews in the coming years, Tyson claimed the fire and bad intentions had gone. I don't have that ferocity. I'm not an animal anymore. Fortunately for the fans on this night, that wasn't the case. Time heavyweight champion. Of the Likewise, Galata might have been looking for a clean fight to clear his name. This certainly wouldn't be the case either. The hard-hitting Andrew Galata. Okay, gentlemen, let's do it right. Touch him up. Made the best man. 21 of Tyson's 42 knockouts in the first round. Galata, stand-up boxer, big right hand, deliberate yet busy, looks to wear you down, but can he keep his composure under pressure? Here we go. The first round caught fire as both men started aggressively. Mike applied pressure, whilst Galata used his jab and height to ride out the onslaught. Straight right, followed by a left by Galata, and then a right uppercut. Locked by Tyson. Not his way and he just stuffed that big jam. Hard break. Though, after being separated in the closing 30 seconds, Tyson landed a trademark overhand right. Oh, that goes Andrew Galata. What a right. Three. Straight right, right off the button. Galata down. Same right, it ended up in that cut, Steve. Oh. Oh. And there's the bell. Cut and badly hurt, Galata was saved by the bell but he didn't like it one bit. That right in hand! You hear? It's perfect fight. Yeah, huh? It's perfect fight. Oh, watch his overhand right. That is right on the money. Galata's got a whole new problem. His requests in between rounds were disregarded by his trainer, Al Cerdo, and Galata entered the second round in survival. Come on, let's go! Didn't take long for Galata to feel the power of Tyson. Galata. 
wanting to end it right here. Oh, a big right hand again. There's another right hand. A lot of shit was standing there, but how much more can he take? Left from the Tyson thus far, but the overhand right just missed with that overhand right. He had bad intentions all over that one, Steve. That was a hail merit. And where Mike continued to headhunt, showing some of his best movement since the Holyfield fights, Galata seemed to have genuinely overcome the worst. Galata doing some Bobby Weaver a little better than I thought he could. Maybe might miss a few shots, but you can see there's some fear in his eyes. He's felt the pain. However, by the end of the second, he wanted no more. Two of the book. Yeah. You're missing it with that right hand because you're looping it. Throw it straight to catch it. You do it. You do it. Oh, I don't think he wants to go on. I don't think he wants to go on. He wants to quit. It's over. He's done it again. Go on and quit. Look at this. Grandma, El Servo says, I can't believe you're doing this. It was a better round considering the first round was on his but you won't know until you taste the power of a puncher like a Tyson. What you have inside you, and now we know Andrew Gallardo will not deal with it. He wants to get the, the heck out of here. He's coming. People are throwing things at him. They're throwing popcorn, soda, beer, everything that they can. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's hope this doesn't really get out of hand now. It's getting very ugly here now. This bout has been ended at the beginning of round number three. Galata refusing to enter the combat at round three. To, to have to take a Tyson punch is not the greatest picnic in the world. But, but this, this is his business. profession. This is his profession, and he's got to continue. With his head under the guillotine, the Polish fighter chose to live another day rather than be beaten down for entertainment. A factor that has always caused mixed opinions within the boxing community. We in the media should maybe not perpetuate a boxing culture wherein it seems as though a fighter must be willing to die. Though many believe that by this stage, Tyson was essentially a four-round fighter and that the poll could have posed real problems for Mike had he not melted down. Did you really recover from that knockdown at the end of the first round? Actually, I was just slip, you know, I, 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 I hasn't been hit very well, and I just I was slip. Despite his post-fight medical showing a fractured cheekbone, a herniated disc, and a concussion, many still question Galata's mental aptitude and ability to deal with genuine adversity. And he remains a man that had all the physical tools, but just couldn't pull the pieces together for a career-defining win. I thought it was just some circus shows where the animals came to perform and, and didn't want to go on stage and perform. Uh, you know, I want to know how you can come and be a boxer and all of a sudden decide that you don't want to fight and walk out the ring. As controversial as it was, the showdown in Motown holds a lot of important lessons. It serves as an accurate summary of Tyson's appeal, Galata's flaws, and the sport's imperfections. I don't care what you call it, but that was uh, sheer cowardice on the part of Andrew Galata. In terms of legacy, this was arguably Mike's last good performance. And Galata, physically and mentally, was never quite the same either. This is, you know, the third time Andrew Galata has basically frozen in a fight at a strategic point. So, so where the Polish fighter deserves recognition for his skill and ability, Galata now stands as a perfect example of why people say boxing is 10% physical and 90% mental. And that ultimately, many boxers have quit during battle, but only some seem to be forgiven. He ain't thinking about getting back to the sad guy. They're not hungry no more. Everybody's got, everybody's got too much money in their pockets. You gotta be hungry in this business. You quit and you think that's your great escape. You think that's the parachute. No, because when you quit, you have to live forever with the understanding that you did that. That's forever.